Hello, my name is Tom Ayers, senior staff writer with the Vermont Standard newspaper in Woodstock, and I'd like to welcome you to the first edition, the inaugural edition of Vermont Standard Time, a public affairs program that's a collaboration of Woodstock Community Television and the Vermont Standard. Not only is this the inaugural program in this series, but it's also the first time that a program has been produced in the new studios of Woodstock Community Television. So we've got a pair of firsts to get things uh, started here with Vermont Standard Time. I'd like to introduce you to my first guest, a newcomer to the Woodstock community, but um, has really hit the ground running over the course of the last three months. Please welcome Eric Duffy, the new municipal manager. Uh, Thank you for having me, and I'm honored to be your first guest. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to have you. And uh, so you're the new municipal manager of the town and village of Woodstock. Yep. You've been here since the 1st of February. What's, uh, what's the first three months been like? You've just hit the three-month point. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a lot. You know, I don't think I've had a chance to breathe yet. Um, <laughs> I, I started on February 1st, uh, and within a month, town meeting was coming, coming up. Uh, followed by uh, the village meeting right after that. So day one, it was hitting the ground running, you know, really trying to get a, get a feel for what those requirements need to, to happen so I could be versed in, in the, the warning and the articles. Um, and so that was kind of my first introduction to Woodstock was, hey, in a month, the budget is being, being voted <laughs> on, you know, we'll, we'll make sure it passes. Uh -huh. um, so that was the kind of the first step, the first step I had. Uh, but really, it's been a really uh, great three months, very, very interesting. Um, I had a lot of opportunity to meet a lot of people in the community, the staff, um, the businesses, and they've all been very, um, I think the best thing about Woodstock, and this is something I touched upon in my interview, because I had visited a number of times, is just how engaged the community is, how engaged mm -hmm. the residents are, how engaged the employees are, all with the greater goal of trying to make Woodstock, or keep Woodstock as being a unique and great place to live and visit. Uh, so having that instant community of welcoming me here and then saying, we're cheering for you, we want you to do a good job because they know if we do a good job in, in town hall, it's going to spread out across the whole community. Um, so that's been really inspiring, I think, for the first mm -hmm. three months to have that support immediately, not having the game to support, but having people come up to me and say, hey, do well because we want you to do well. Mm -hmm. um, to break down a little bit, you know, I think the, the first thing I did when I got, got here was trying to understand how a town operates. You know, it's very different to know a town and then mm -hmm. to know how a town actually functions. Uh, two very different things, and most people don't know that second part. Mm -hmm. um, so really trying to figure out how that how Woodstock operates, you know, internally for a municipality, but also externally for the people in, in, in the greater, greater, greater um, community, I guess I should say. Um, so spending time with... Um, staff, spending time with residents and figuring out what projects are ongoing, mm -hmm. what projects have happened in the past, what projects are coming up. Uh, then also just to understand how things have worked previously and tweaks that need to get made, some are short term, some are long term. Um, but really just kind of an understanding of, okay, what is Woodstock? You know, what is Woodstock today? How does it function? And then how do we want it to function in a few years? Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of step one. Um, the next step was really spending time with the employees and getting to know them and letting them could get to know me. Um, there's been some uh, instability in the officer, manager's office for the last few years um, and really giving people a chance to say, hey, I'm here for the long term. I'm going to provide some stability for you. Like, let's form a relationship and let's see how we can work together. Mm -hmm. um, so that was individual meetings with employees, uh, really getting to know them, letting them get to know me. Um, creating uh, monthly staff lunches, so I, I spend time with them. Uh -huh. Outside of, hey, I need this paperwork, or what's going on here, just right. sit down, hey, what's going on with you, how are things happening? Right, a little bit more informal yes. kind of. Yeah, try, yeah, try yeah, and create yeah. those yeah. bonds. Um, and then digging deep into what their jobs actually are, and we're working now internally on creating new job descriptions for every employee. So not, they might have been hired a year ago, 10 years ago, but the job has morphed, especially since COVID. So what are they actually doing? You know, how and then once we know what they're actually doing, how then can I support them and how they need to, or, or, um, on the best way to get their job accomplished? And also how best to motivate them and also give them the tools they need to succeed and potentially future training so they can be promoted mm -hmm. and move up. Mm -hmm. um, as we know, it's so much more difficult and cost costly to hire someone new than to retain someone. 
So how can you keep that going and have someone as a good employee, but then give them a pathway to move up so they remain happy and fulfilled in the position? Um, the third step I think I've been going through is really trying to get to know the community. Mm -hmm. um, people have been very willing to come in and meet me, which has been great, um, and have a few minutes to sit down, talk to them, hear from them. Um, but also I've made, I've made an effort to kind of go out into the community and try to start talking to people, form those relationships, but also give them an opportunity to talk to me about what they see they need going forward. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So just last month I started my first public office hours. So I went to Montvert in the morning for an hour and allow people to come up to me and talk to me and, and go there. And that's gonna be an ongoing thing, hopefully monthly or bi-monthly, um, to really give everyone in the community the opportunity to come meet with me, talk to me, and have an opportunity to kind of like form a relationship and see how we can work together. Yeah, that's a model that I've seen work with great success in other communities. Um, I formerly lived in Burlington where I actually served on the city council mm -hmm. for a couple of terms. And uh, Mayor Weinberger, who, by the way, uh, is a native, uh, I don't know if you'll, you'll have an opportunity to meet him at some point, but uh, Moreau Weinberger is a native of Woodstock. He's, I didn't know uh, that. And he's now the mayor of Burlington. Yeah. And he holds um, weekly coffee hours in different sections of the city yep. uh, each week and has been doing that successfully for his entire uh, tenure as mayor. Um, it's a great way of really learning what's really going on at the grassroots level and what the concerns are. And so. I think too, it gets you out of the office and away from your email, people coming, phone calls, and it gives you, it gives you a chance to kind of almost reset and talk to someone and really kind of have the time to figure out what they need and, mm -hmm. and what they want. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, you also help in a local business, which is always a good idea. So yeah, it, yeah. It's, a, it's a great program and Absolutely. I'm, I'm happy to do it. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, you, you already spoken about having the challenges of town meeting and the village meeting and, and the uh, annual budgeting process. Um, uh, landing uh, in your lap, in a sense, uh, one month into your tenure. Uh, another thing that, that has landed in your lap <laughs> one month into your tenure, or a little bit thereafter, is uh, transition in the Woodstock Police Department, yep. with a departure in mid-July uh, by means of retirement of Chief Robbie Blish after 11 years of yep. service. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, what the search process consists of? I know there was a public hearing before the village trustees a few weeks ago to solicit public input as to what they would be looking at, the public would be looking for in a new chief. And um, can you just illuminate a little bit what's going on with that search process now? Yeah, I think uh, first I just want to take a moment to uh, thank Chief Wish for all the work he's done for Woodstock in the last 11 years. Um, I have only been here for three months, but the stories I've heard of him um, have been extraordinary, and mm -hmm. I think he's well respected in the community. Uh, I know for me, in the time being here, he's been a great colleague to work with. He's always provided some support, information, counseling if I need it, um, and I'm really sad to see him go. Um, I really have enjoyed my three months with him, and I'm gonna enjoy the next three months. <laughs> um, <laughs> every day I, I ask him if he's really sure about retiring. Um, so I just wanna first start off that I, I really appreciate all the work he's done for Woodstock, and whoever comes in after him is gonna have a well-functioning department that has operated well for a long, long period of time, mm -hmm. and that's credit to the chief and, and the work he's done. Um, with that said, unfortunately he's retiring, so the world must go on. Um, so what we have decided to do in concert with the trustees is to, um, the first thing we did when we heard that the chief was retiring was reach out to VLCT, who's the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, who offer um, counseling support for municipalities in Vermont um, for their advice. Um, and their advice was to um, do, a, do a search and to, uh, if Woodstock wanted to, use a consulting firm uh, that's run by Jim Baker. Um, to help facilitate that search. Mm -hmm. uh, and the real, the, the reason why that was the advice and, and the reason why we decided to go that route is um, we want the best person for Woodstock in that role and we want the best person that fits the best for what Woodstock needs going forward. Mm -hmm. um, and by doing this search, we're gonna have the opportunity to see who's out there, and who's interested, and then whoever we uh, appoint as next chief is gonna have the legitimacy of this was the best person for the job. They went through this whole process um, and we've all agreed that this person is the right person for Woodstock. So I think immediately 
it gives some legitimacy to the person chosen when they step into that role of fulfilling what would Chief Wish has done for 11 years. Uh, this is just not someone we like. This person has gone through a mm -hmm. month long process and we agree that this person is the best person. So it, it gives that legitimacy right away, which I think is gonna be very important, especially when you're stepping in the shoes of someone who's been there and well liked for 11 years. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of the background to, to, the, to the search. Um, so we entered into a contract with uh, the, the consultant firm um, and what we did was they sat down and interviewed uh, myself, um, the trustees, um, some members, some department head members, I should say all department head members in Woodstock, um, people in the police department uh, to really get a sense of, okay, you know, what are the needs, you know, in the police department, what are the needs of Woodstock going forward? Um, what has happened in the past? What's happening now? What, what's going to what's going to happen uh, going forward? Uh, the members of the community individually, some people from the schools, businesses, to really get a, a wide view of Woodstock as a whole, and then um, you know from there we started working on um, the job description. I should back up, and then we had the public forum, which you're aware right, of. It. Right. Uh, so we invited the public to come uh, and discuss um, openly what they wanted in the next chief. Um, and what they actually really wanted in the next police department going forward, you right. know, um, because when the, the new chief comes in, they will make that department their own. And how's that going to look um, going forward? And, and what do, what does the community want in that? Um, so after that point, we took all the feedback we had, and we sat down and we wrote a job description that we felt best articulated what we heard on the community from all the interviews and public forums. Um, that job description is currently advertised now. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be advertised throughout the month of May, um, that at which point we will take all the uh, applicants, we'll do a first screening process to make sure that their resume matches, or the, or the resume matches what they actually have accomplished, um, at which point there'll be a selection of applicants that will go in front of a hiring committee. Um, and at that point, it will probably go to uh, a, f a final round uh, that, uh, that an appointment will be made from there. Mm -hmm. I, I've actually reviewed the job prospectus that you um, uh, very courteously sent, uh, sent to the Vermont Standard a week or so ago. And there's two kind of central threads that really run through it. One is this whole concept of um, what has come to be known as community policing, mm -hmm. uh, really a kind of a person-to-person on-the-street connection with the populace yes. as opposed to the old um, uh, 20th century very crime reactive yep. focused kind of policing and then the other thread is is really something that makes unique uh, makes Woodstock um, uh, somewhat unique among uh, rural Vermont communities of its size and that is we are a major tourist destination. Yes. And so a big part of the policing component here, I think it mentions in the prospectus on peak days, we have as many as 10,000 mm -hmm. cars a day coming through the village. Yeah. So um, uh, will those be central qualities that you'll be looking for in a potential new police chief? Uh, not necessarily somebody with um, uh, a tourism perspective, mm -hmm. but certainly, um, uh, events management, those kinds of things are going to be kind of critical. Do you agree? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I think Woodstock is unique in how it functions, how it operates, and um, I think just because someone is or could be a great police chief does not mean they would or could be a great police chief for Woodstock. Because right. there are unique things that go, go along with that. Um, and one of the things we heard over and over again was the community policing. The idea that the community wants to know the police officer's name and have the police officer know their name and have that relation built up not only like you said reactive of oh there's a crime hey who are you i'm here to help but it's hey i know you from because i walk around here every single day mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in your mm -hmm. store i'm in the community i'm on the green i'm wherever right, else right right um, and really build those relationships up so there's a trust between the community and the police force that they know they're working to, in concert together for the greater good, they're not two separate entities the way there needs to be tension involved. Mm -hmm. um, so really approach it as the police should be part of the community, you know, as well as, as, well as you know, the, uh, doing the job that they need to do. Um, so that's something we're really looking for is someone who can, you know, play that role in the community to facilitate those conversations, to ensure that their department is open, transparent, um, 
and available for the for the community. Um, I know a current chief used to do the coffee um, talks with that I, I've been doing. Um, so someone who is really involved in the community. Mm -hmm. um, I think the tourist part is, is important, absolutely. Um, and there's a lot of part of Woodstock that does have to take consider in consideration tourism. Um, but that's not going to be a deal breaker in the sense that they have to come from a tourist background. Or right, else. yeah. Um, yeah. But they just have to be aware of how Woodstock is and be, and, uh, be able to show that they'll be able to fit into that. that, that, that uh, right, yeah. right, right. Like ramping up, making use of part-timers when there's major events and those kinds of things. And of course, the traffic control and speed control is something that we heard uh, addressed as a concern by some people at mm -hmm. the open f at the public forum two weeks ago. So those are kind of the nuts and bolts of, of, of policing that that'll have to be attended to. Yeah, as and well. I also say in, in, even to some degree ambassadors community. You know, if, if when people see a police officer or a parking meter made, they they know they work for the community, mm -hmm. and so if they're able to present themselves in a positive way, it goes a long way to present Woodstock in a positive way. Mm -hmm. So really making sure that that's out there, uh, out front and center. Right, absolutely. Um, I'm sure that longer term residents and people who have been really engaged in the community of Woodstock um, understand how this works, but can you explain a little bit, uh, when I read the job prospectus, it, it consistently refers to the Woodstock Village Police Department. Yes but they provide policing services to the whole town. So how does that interface between the village and the town work when it comes to policing? Can you explain that just briefly? Yeah, so in, in simplest terms, um, the police department is currently a department within the village, mm -hmm. um, and then the town um, pays a set amount um, to the village to have police coverage at a set amount of time per, per week. Um, that being said, you know, if there's an emergency, it's not going to be, you know, up oh, about 40 hours around, we're going home. But um, that's kind of how it, it, it functions as it's a village police department. They report to the trustees. Um, and then for a set amount of time per week, they also do patrols and, and other stuff in, in, the in the greater town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, um, wishing you all the and the town all the best with that recruitment process will be, uh, I believe it's through the end of May, May 31st is the deadline for applications. Yep. It's being advertised through a variety of yes. uh, police chief associations and other municipal type yes. uh, recruitment websites. So um, uh, it, will be, uh, it will be interesting and I, I concur. Um, this community owes a great debt of gratitude to Chief Blish for all that he has done yeah. to bring us to this point, and we all wish him well um, in his future pursuits in his retirement. Yeah. Uh, uh, another topic I'd like to bring up, uh, because it's, it's, it's um, front and center right now, is the revision of the town plan, mm -hmm. which is a fairly regularly scheduled yeah. process. Um, that, uh, that Woodstock, uh, both town and village, are in the midst of right now. Uh, where does that stand and what's coming up in the coming weeks where public will be able to have input? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the town and village plan will be submitted to Two Rivers uh, Monday, May 8th, uh, and then they go through their process. Um, they have one or two meetings where they go through review, um, provide comments if necessary, um, and then it'll come back to the town on May 31st for a public hearing. Um, and after the public hearing the same night, um, ideally, there'll be adoption by the town and village on the town plan, um, and then it'll go to the state for approval as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, what are the tweaks that are happening this time around um, that make it a little bit different from a year ago? What, what are they fine-tuning? Uh, I, I, I believe there's some fine-tuning on um, just um, some language around housing, um, some mm -hmm. la language just to clear up some language that has been, you know, appropriate in the past or to update from zoning uh, ordinances that have been passed passed in the last year or so. Okay. Um, and they're also working on a designation for the village for a task fill as well. And Two Rivers out of Quechee Regional Commission's role is to, to look at consistent see with regional plans. Yes. 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 Exactly. Exactly. And then by extension, state, state regs as yeah. well. Absolutely. Um, we're on the cusp of the busiest time of year um, yes. uh, in, in Woodstock, um, and that's the, the summer and fall yep. 
tourism season. Uh, what are we doing to get ready, and what's it looking like for um, for the coming onslaught of visitors from all over the world? The first thing we're doing is hoping it stops raining, uh, because that has really put a real hamper on DPW's ability to go out there and fix the roads from, from the plowing. Uh, so it's starting to look good. Uh, we're recording this on a Thursday, and it, the forecast next week looks like no rain. So hopefully that that stays that, that stays a course, and the sun comes out, and the roads harden a little bit. Because um, that's going to give them the ability to go out and, and grade the roads and, and, and fix the, the, the plow damage that has happened over the, the, all the snowy winter we had. Um, so all of us are really hoping eternally of just a few weeks of no rain. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. This is my first mud season as well, so it, it, it's, it's been inter interesting. I, uh, I, I, I made the mistake of trying to go somewhere where I didn't know where I was going for my GPS. Got on a dirt road um, in rain, and I just had to turn around and <laughs> go back the other way. I was going to brave it. So I didn't want the Vermont Center to have town managers uh, stuck in the mud, and yeah, the metaphor yeah. that would cause. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, that, 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 that's part of it. So really getting the roads up there and, and, and getting them ready. Um, and then the conversations of really how does the summer and, and fall look? You know, what tweaks can we make to make it more um, hospitable for the tourists, but also for the residents? Who live here, you know, um, you know, they're impacted as much as anyone else by the changes we make. Um, yeah. So we're having conversations about, you know, um, how best to um, work around the traffic. Are there, are there ways that we can mitigate the traffic flow to make it a little more easier for people? Mm -hmm. um, you know, where are the buses coming? Where are they stopping? Where are they dropping off? Mm -hmm. um, do we need more facilities for restrooms? You know, if if so, how, how can we do that? Absolutely. Um, I, I believe. That the trustees are, are looking at, you know, can we have some nonprofits, you know, selling um, some goods in, in the green on Sunday and Mondays to kind of offset the, the lack of um, restaurants that are open on the, on the weekends, um, and then really, you know, trying to I think update some of the maps we have so people who arrive in Woodstock know where to go and, and make sure things are open and available to them, yeah. um, and really trying to be more communicative to people who are coming, and then also listen to their concerns of the residents. You know how how they're impacted and what we can do for them to make sure that Woodstock can have the tourists come because Woodstock's a great place, mm -hmm. but also the residents don't feel like they can't enjoy their community, you know, on a weekend because you know tourism is is so high. Absolutely. Um, so that's part of it. Um, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but the green now has the picnic tables out there. And I have to thank Mark Hunter from DPW and the Chamber of Commerce, and I believe the Rotary as well for kind of facilitating that, mm -hmm. putting mm -hmm. it out there. Um, DPW will be uh, out um, fixing the crosswalks, you know, in the coming weeks once the weather warms up a little bit to make sure those are visible for the drivers coming in and people can cross the street uh, safely. Um, and then I think really, you know, just all of us preparing for, you know, the fun times when the mm -hmm. sun's out and the weather's nice and everyone yeah. wants to be in Woodstock. And Absolutely. That's why we're here. Absolutely. You know? A lot of the issues you've touched on, I, I hope to explore here on Vermont Standard uh, time in, in weeks to come. Uh, I, the, the, the Standard regularly covers the, the, uh, the work and the issues that are being dealt with by the Woodstock Economic Development mm -hmm. Commission. And they've really been drilling into a lot of these tourism issues, the challenges, the rewards, the impact on, 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 on people who live here yep. year round. Um, and so, um, and, and they're planning on a, uh, they're in the midst of what will be a year long review where they'll be working with um, the townspeople, village residents, uh, business people to really kind of look and surveying uh, visitors themselves mm -hmm. about what their experience yep. of Woodstock is to try and address all of these kinds of things um, and and uh, bring a little bit more collaboration among the different sectors to it. So, yeah. uh, um, uh, well, get ready. I, I'm so thankful to see the sun peeking a little bit through I the know. clouds today. It's been a, a miserable couple of days, but it, uh, this too shall pass. And, and I hear you on mud season. I, I've uh, I've been in that position yep. myself, yeah. uh, traveling someplace where I didn't quite know where I was going. Yeah. I found out what the reality <laughs> of mud season is in Vermont. So, well, Eric Duffy, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Um, welcome to to Woodstock. Um, thank you for the uh, the um, the more open, communicative approach you're bringing to mm -hmm. the position. Not that it hasn't been that way before, but um, uh, it's it's really great to to know that the town is going to. Uh, 
great lanes to really connect with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis yep. and hear what folks have to say. So thanks for that. And I'm sure we'll uh, have you back as time goes on. I'm happy and, to come back uh, whenever you need me. Absolutely. And uh, I don't want to speak for anyone, but I'd, uh, I'll try very hard for the new police chief to come here as well once we get them hired and, and in their position if you, if you would like. Absolutely. That'd Much appreciated. All right. Well, thanks again. Thank you. Take care. Thanks.